Okay, so page 155 for extra credit. Everybody say the amygdala. Amygdala. And then, so, what's the amygdala? Do you know? Okay, so I'm not an expert on this. I just know a few things, all right? The amygdala, in my understanding, is what we call the dinosaur brain or the alligator brain or a brain that's in us from way back when. So literally a brain? So it's a part of your brain or a place where you think and when you process certain things, it jumps to different parts. It's like you got a computer up there and when you're processing one thing, it jumps over there to the amygdala. When you're processing another, it jumps to the hippocampus. Everybody say hippocampus. Hippocampus. So my understanding is the amygdala is the old brain from way back in the days when we um, were dinosaurs. I, I don't know. From way back then, okay? <laughs> the hippocampus is your new brain. That's where you actually think and reason. The amygdala is what happens when you're under stress. And it can be any kind of stress. It can even be a light stress. Say you're in a car accident. Say you're in a class and the teacher calls on you and you don't know the answer. You with me? That kind of stress can fire off and you can be all of a sudden you're in the amygdala, this part of your brain. Okay, this part of your brain only does three things well. They're the three F's. What are they? Freeze, fight, or flight. Freeze, fight, or flight. Okay, how many of you have experienced this in your life? Something happens, you're stressed out. Natalie, do you remember a particular situation? What did you do in that situation? I froze. You froze. Literally, you can't speak, you can't react, etc. right? How long did it take you to come out of your frozenness? Okay, once the trouble had passed, so some time, I'm imagining that was some amount of time, right? Even if it's a car wreck, right? We're in a car accident, which can be very dramatic, right? And can trigger all kinds of things for us as humans. You jump into this part, right? You may freeze, you don't react well. For some of us, that's the way we go. Okay, who's been in another one where you fight? Anybody remember a situation where you were under stress and you fight? You went to, you went to anger or blows or man, I don't know what, yeah? Okay, you remember one? What was, what, uh, how long did it last? And do you feel like you were in control when that happened? Uh, yeah, I mean, less than like 10 minutes. Okay, so a period of time, maybe as much as 10 minutes. That's quite some time. Did you yell or scream or what'd you do? Uh, you went, you went for blows. Yeah. Interesting, okay. Do you feel like you could control that? I asked that already, you do? Because mm -hmm. the idea of this brain is you go there whether you like it or not. It's an automatic sort of, sort of thing for us. We're trying to survive. We're going for survival at that point, is what this brain's about. Okay, how about flight? Any of you ever run away? You remember one, Marisol? And, and do you remember, are you able to share the type of stress you were under? You don't have to if, it does, if it's not appropriate. You can always say pass or, or I don't know yet. Is fear a type of stress? Fear is absolutely a type of stress, absolutely. Yeah, so you were in the moment very afraid and you took off. Yeah. Okay, so that's this brain. When we're in this brain, apparently, in most cases, not all, because you, you answer differently, apparently you're not able to be reasoned with. You ever been in a classroom with students and the teacher and the student and somebody's triggered and the student literally seems like they're not functioning? Maybe the teacher too. Does this sound familiar? And maybe you know yourself where you're like, in this state, I'm not really functioning. So what's happening, you're not thinking. The hippocampus is the part of the brain where now you're rational. So sometimes I've heard this called flooded, right? We'll be flooded with emotions or whatever's happening, like fear. You're flooded with fear and your system immediately goes to this emergency mode. In that mode, we're not rational. We're not thinking in general, in general, okay, is the, is the idea. It has to, we have to deflood and come back out to this part of the brain, the hippocampus, where now we can reason again. So we've all experienced this. Um, you're kind of thinking about what you can learn about yourself and others, and you're kind of looking for this situation. If you're with your friends or family and something happens, you're looking for, oh, are they in the, are they in the dinosaur brain, or are they actually thinking right now, right? 
Okay, so here's the assignment for page 155 for extra credit. Right about a time that you were threatened and your reaction to the threat. Did you freeze, fight, or take flight? Looking back at the experience, how long did it take you to return to the hippocampus, the rational thinking brain? And you can add whatever else you want in there. Four minutes. <laughs>